to the Workforce Connections Podcast, where we discuss workforce development in Southern Nevada. Here's your host. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to the Workforce uh, Connections Podcast, commonly known as the WC Podcast. My name is Jack Martin. I'll be your host for this evening. And with me, legendary Dr. Ricardo Villalobos. Right, right. Welcome, Dr. Villalobos. Hey, thanks, Jack. Glad to be here, man. How you doing, brother? Doing good. Doing good, man. Um, feeling good. Feeling like uh, I'm living my best life, Jack. So ready look, ready for this interview, man. You look like a different cat, don't you? <laughs> Feel like a different cat, man. For sure. I know today is a year. It's a good year, right? It's a, a, year, great, it's a great year. Year of life changes, right? Yes, sir. So I got to tell you, Rick, one of the things I, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you first, I mean, you know, obviously we've had this opportunity through the Workforce Board to, you know, kind of mess around with this podcast, have a little fun, interview people that we love and respect, right? So obviously when, when they asked me, Jack, who do you want to interview? I said, I got to, I got to do Rick. Right. Rick's my man. It. Love Rick it. to death. Rick also, you know, when Love I met too, you, brother. what, 13 years ago. Yeah. I remember it. it was at a, it was at an elementary school over on the West side. Right. It was like right. some safe, safe village, you know, dad's yeah. presentation, right? You came in yeah. there, you were all vato locoed out, right? Had your right. hair slicked back. Slick back, man. Yeah. Had the big old, you know, the big yeah. beard. You looked, you looked awesome. You came in yeah. here, you gave some, you know, gave some hype words about, you know, what our responsibilities as men were, right? And, and it really touched my soul. We started talking a little bit after mm-hmm. that. We yeah. really we really started touching base. And then, you know, then, you know, just knowing you over the last 12, 13 years, I mean, you got a story, man. Oh, you thanks, know, Jack. and I, I know I was interviewed by Jaime on this thing a while back. And, you know, he's got a script and it's, you know, everybody's, you know, we're going to do the hot minutes at the end and all that. <laughs> you know me, I'm not I scripted. Do. I'm I not, do. I'm not, I'm not I scripted. I know it's a bit of a rattlesnake, man. So right, yeah, right, yeah, right, right, right. I'm ready, man. Well, I sent you whatever. I just gave you some topics that yeah. I wanted to cover. Like, like, I mean, Rick, I've only been here 12, 13 years and this town has changed. Yeah. So you've been here long time ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, were you you were born here? Or? Born and raised here, Jack. Born and raised here, yes, sir. Brothers and sisters. Yeah, I've got about uh, seven brothers and sisters. So one half brother. One half brother. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then um, we're about about thirty deep with you know nieces, nephews, kids, and nieces and nephews. So we we're about Villalobos about thirty deep here. How how did your how did the Villalobos's land in Las Vegas? How how did the how did the family tree start springing from 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 our community here? Yeah, well, my dad, both my parents were immigrants. You know, uh, my dad moved here and then uh, got involved with the, the the trades. Actually, he was a concrete finisher. Started with the laborers, became a concrete finisher, helped to build a lot of the casinos here. And then my mom, he, he met my mom here. Uh, my mom was in the culinary union, was a hotel maid, I think spent, you know, 20, 30 years at the Golden Nugget. So they ended up meeting here in Vegas and then obviously, you know, hooked up here, had six kids here and, and raised us on the east side. On the east side. On so, east side, yeah. I, you know, I love driving around this town, especially with people that are from this town. Because, you know, you know, Pat, me and Pat Schreiber, great friends, and Pat will drive me up Rancho and go, that's where I went to elementary school. That's where I went to middle school. That, that's no longer a middle school anymore. It's now a blah, 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 whatever. So yeah, yeah. you got to tell me the history, man. And I also know back in the day when you graduated high school, how many high schools were there? I think there were probably 15, 20 high schools. Right. right now, now there's like 50. What, are you a, are you a Valley guy? Or are you? A, nah, I'm a Las Vegas high school wildcat. He's a wildcat. So, so it was it was a Las Vegas high school before it became the Las Vegas Performing Arts, the the high school downtown. Okay. So now Las Vegas high school moved to actually like off of Sahara and Hollywood out there on the east side. All right. But I was I was bust. You were bust. I was, I was bust from the east side all the way to downtown. Really? Yeah. It, what, what was the reason for that? They didn't have enough, like, Latino blood over there? Probably, yeah. I mean, it was a lot of blacks and browns at the high school, and it was probably one of those things where you were in a certain area and you got bust and made, made, jumped on the bus freshman through high school year. Really? Yes, you still, sir. You still got friends? I, I still got friends. You still got friends that are from, friends. from that generation, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, You still guys still, friends, they man. still Vegas locals? Vegas locals, still yeah. here, never left. So yeah, still connected to a well, few. Well, you know, yeah, I've been here now, I've, I've told you 12 years, and I you mean, know, and I hire a lot of people in my line of work. To find a Las Vegas born and raised is like finding a dodo bird. There's just, there's not many, yeah, there's right? Not, yeah. And there's and the, and the folks that are here have a deep, deep sense of pride for UNLV, right? Yeah. Deep, deep sense of pride for their local high school. So it's great. You know what I mean? So yeah. Valley Wildcat. 
Vegas Wildcats. Oh, so, sorry, Vegas sorry, Wildcats. sorry, sorry, sorry. Valley was the Valley was uh, the Vikings. The Vikings, yeah, right? The and Vikings, that was yeah, uh, yeah. that was the famous pitcher, right? Um, oh, I don't uh, even know. Greg Maddox man. was a Valley. Oh, was he? Okay, I, didn't I think even know, so. Jack. Yeah, yeah. That's my other famous guy. I know right. Dr. Villalobos. Right. I know, and I don't even know him. I just watched him on TV, right? So. Sports? What we what we play? What, you know? Yeah, Jack. Man, so I I grew up. Um, you know, my dad was a like a huge boxing fan, man. So he always wanted to get us into boxing. We never really got into it, but he taught us how to box. But what he would do is get these um, we call them these backyard boxing brawls, man. Where he did the socks on man, with not actually gloves, man. <laughs> okay. They were they were like right. eight ounces. You know, they were the. Little eight ounce red and white plastic gu- gloves from like Kmart, you know. And right, then, right. Um, Back there cracking each other in the Yeah, yeah, man. So he he'd tie up the he we'd have the old school clothesline and we'd have some trees and he'd just take you know some rope, tie a little ring out, and then uh, he'd he'd say, okay, you know, Jack, you and Ricardo, like the weight wasn't an issue, man. He goes, I'm on those, you know, let let let's go and. And so you know, when I look back at it though, man, I, I, it was my dad's way of um, keeping us kind of out of trouble. Like his big thing is you know, don't get caught up with the guns and the knives, you know, if you're going to fight, fight with these. So old just, school. yeah, just old school, man. So just the bare knuckles, man. And so, um, you know, I mean, we, definitely my family, you know, we've had our share of challenges, but I think he was something that he instilled in us was to, to fight with these and not get caught up in, uh, in the BS, man. Well, I've, I've got to meet him one time. Yeah. So you're the run to the litter. You you are the littlest one in the whole well, clan, I'm, I'm, right? I'm one of the, I'm the second oldest, but the, yeah, yeah, the littlest one. You're man. the littlest one because Pops ain't a little dude. <laughs> no, he's not. If, if Pops has got some concrete finisher mitts on him, mm-hmm. so Pops puts his hands on you, you know you didn't you you know oh, yeah. you've been put hands on. Oh yeah, he was right? a believer in not sparing the rod, man, the leather belt, <laughs> the the tree branch, you know, right. whatever anything he can get within, his hands on. Man. Anything within grabbing reach, hey, right? Hey, yeah, moms too, man. Well, I, well, I know I know recently he had uh, some health concerns. Is he? Well, he, he flipped the truck or yeah, yeah. That, that was what two, three years ago. Yeah, about three years ago. Is, Jack, he, I, is he is he back? Is he? You know, he'll he'll be in a wheelchair the rest of his life, man. Mm-hmm. So uh, appreciate you asking. Sorry you know, to love hear him, that. respect him. Um, obviously, still you know, afraid of him. Still afraid. In a so wheelchair, he, you that, still snatch yeah, your yeah, out that, your that, shoes. That psychological kind of uh, <laughs> you know thing that kind of sticks in your head as a kid never leaves, man. So, right. And, yeah. and, and, uh, and I know at one point you told me you lost a bunch of weight and you were really worried, and then then you got back on that manudo and man, mom was cooking again. He got back again. to mom. That's what the issue was, man. <laughs> so you now know, he's so. happy. Now he's happy and heavy. Happy and, and heavy. Happy and heavy, man. Rolling so. in that chair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good for him. Good yeah. for him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, obviously we'll all be praying for his healthy. I appreciate you that. You know, continue yeah. to be healthy. And I know you guys are close because there's nothing better than sitting around, having a few drinks, listening to some Via Lobos, right. you know, uh, pachanga stories, right? right you know, right, everybody right. acting up, you know, got the dancing horses out right, there, got the mariachi right, music right. going, right? The banda, you, you <laughs> name it, man. The, the dancing horses, like you said. Right. Right. It's, right. A, it's the pachanga, as we say, man, for right. sure. Right, For sure. It was, it was, On a ranch. When's the last one? I mean, is COVID, uh, is COVID cramped the Via Lobos? party style nah man um, <laughs> we're still getting down yeah still getting down my mom's 70th is coming up uh in may so okay so uh, we're getting we're getting ready to get yeah, down with the, the get down the, the text already came out man the yeah the banda the the tacatero i mean you use the horses probably bulls calves goats chickens you know uh, well <laughs> so, me, and, me and sonia are gonna wait for our email uh invite okay? yeah, yeah. yeah. We we need to be there. You All know? right, man. That is that is going to be fun. All right. So you, you never you, you never hit me with the sports. So pops was boxing. Yeah, I know, sorry. I know Jack, you yeah. were a champ, right? You know, so I boxed and then uh, got into uh, I did a little baseball. You know, like a little baseball for a while, and then uh, got into the swimming my freshman year. Okay. You know, um, but then that was it. Just my freshman year, right? right? And then, but got into wrestling, and then I think wrestling was just. Uh, I think I found. Found my sport, man. When I started to wrestle, loved it. What, what think, weight did you wrestle at? I, as a freshman, I was at 103, believe it oh, or not, man. Lord. So I, I was skinny and scrawny, lanky like I still am, right? But um, I was a murderer's uh, weights right yeah, in there, Yeah, I was right? 103, 112, and then jumped to 130 my my, uh, my junior year, and then went up to one four, cut to 145s, and yeah, took state there. So anybody who doesn't know, wrestling is the worst sport in the world because it starts <laughs> the weekend of Thanksgiving. Right. So any wrestler you know yeah. is sitting out in the car miserable while everybody else is eating turkey and mashed potatoes. Yeah, yeah. Your wrestling son or daughter is out in yeah. the car starving themselves, right, right. waiting to get, get waiting to strangle somebody the next day. Eating carrots, you know, <laughs> apple slices, you and, know. And spitting. Spitting <laughs> with the Jolly Rancher shit. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Lots of spitting. Yeah. So, I mean, a champion, where did you wrestle? 
wrestle your stage match? Was that local or did you go, you have to go up north? No, it was at, uh, I think, man, I think it was at Chaparral High School, man. Right. Rest, wrestled the local from Bonanza. Bonanza, so, you still Bonanza. you still stay in touch? Nah. Remind him? Uh, what'd you get nah, him with? Nah, I, did you point him or did you, did you pin him? No, nah, I pointed him. Really? So, yeah, yeah. All right. What was it? Yeah. What was the final? I think it was like fourteen seven. Ooh, so you schooled yeah, him, and yeah. you, at the end you were letting him up, right? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just just to, letting him up, taking him down, just to really know, punk yeah, yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, that's that's that, that should show you right there the competitiveness right. of the Villa Lobos family, right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, ha I could have had you fourteen zip. Right. But I'm gonna let you up. I'm gonna snatch you again. Right, 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 right. Here's this outside single. Here's this power double. Right, that's great. So after after college, or I'm sorry, after high school, did we get college scholarship offers? No, wrestling? Champ? No, Jack. No, man. I, I um, you know, I I really wasn't focused on going to college. I mean, I think probably just like any other kid, you know, hey, you should. But you know, my parents weren't um, college graduates. Obviously, my dad, third grade. You know, my mom probably middle school level. Right. And then, uh, so, you know, I just, in my mind, I figured I just, I just need to go to work. But a buddy of mine was like, Hey man, you know, why don't you, you know, you're wrestling. Why don't you come out here? He was at Cal state Fullerton at the time. And then I think, you know, with all the stuff that was happening in my life, I think he just kind of says, I'm going to, I'm just going to come by July 5th, swoop you up and get you to move out here. And, uh, so went there but I just moved there. I didn't know the college process. I didn't enroll or anything like that. I just went to get away uh, from you know everything I was doing here in Vegas, man. So I, I love that. I love that idea because those of us that uh, you know weren't exposed to college growing up. I mean, that wasn't something that was just you know uh, uh, the natural progression, right? Right, right? I mean, there's a lot of confusion. So now when we're in this workforce world, that and when you, especially when you live inner city, you don't even know that college is really an option. You hear people talking about it, right? Yeah. But you never really understand it. I remember for one of the first times we moved and somebody was talking about, you know, they're they talking about going to college. They're talking about doing all these things. And I was like shocked because I was used to people talking about hitting licks or, right. you know, doing something else, doing doing nefarious nonsense, right? And now yeah. all of a sudden I'm sitting surrounded by all these positive folks talking about these, these great next steps. Yeah. What got you to want to? What, what got you to want to enroll? Or did you? Were you just down there in Fullerton hanging out with all the college girls? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> right? Jay, no. No, I think I think I went, and then I think like man, it was like four or five months later. I wasn't enrolled. I was like, you know, came back, and then I th I took like a couple uh, classes. I think at CSN, you know, just like okay, I'm going to check it out, do that, and then um, I mean, and then and then I actually ended up moving to San Diego. I enrolled at Palomar College. Took a few classes there, and then. What were we I, studying I was, at that time? Hey, I, what was the dream? Don't even remember, man. General Ed, <laughs> don't, don't even let remember, me just see man. if I can get through this math class. Well, that's it, probably, man. I got you know did a little kind of worked out with the wrestling team there and stuff like that. Blew my knee out for the second time, and then um, yeah, just took a few classes. wasn't really ever focused, man. And then um, I think as far as college goes, um, you know, eventually I think I was later in life, man. I think I was uh, maybe thirty where I decided I got to, I got to finish college. So, um, I ended up kind of getting into a college program. It was like a night school thing and then ended up finishing my undergrad. So you're, you're living in San Diego that whole time. Yeah. You know, you're working, what were you doing for, to, to put the, to put the, uh, food on the table. Food on the ta food yeah, on the table. Yeah, yeah. Jake, I was in the ministry, man. I was doing uh, ministry work. Uh, did that for, gosh, man, probably about 12 years or so. I love these stories too, because I love it when you the, when Rick tells you about being sold out, right? That was the line. <laughs> Rick Rick will get in here and he'll be like, Jack, you don't get this, man. We were sold out, bro. It was right, in. Right. It was in, right? And I mean, it, it's it's great because it's a whole nother Rick. Yeah, it's, right, it's, right. It's a, it's a it's like the the good Rick gets out of Rick. Not to say there's a, there's a bad yeah, Rick, right, but right. the really well, there really is good, there is but, 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 <laughs> the really really good Rick steps out. But it's yeah. it's really fun. I mean, twelve years in the ministry. Yeah. Good memories, bad memories, yeah, incredible good, good memories. Good memories, Jack, man. Built some great friendships. Uh, got to know some great people. Had some great mentors. Um, I, I think there, man, is where I found uh, just my passion and my calling for uh, working with young adults, you know, particularly young men, you know. And then I think, um, I mean, bottom line, Jack, I'll just put it this way. I think that's where I found uh, God's calling for my life, you know. And I think when I stepped out, I remember thinking, I don't want to do just anything. Um, it's got to be something that has to do with uh, young men in particular. I really wanted to influence the next generation of young men, man. Like mm -hmm. the next Jacks and next, you know, Ricardos, you know, right. stuff like that.
Right. So now you're in the you're in the ministry. You're 30. You're taking night classes. Yeah. You're you know when how do we how do we meet Mama, uh, the wife, the kids? When when did we come back to Vegas? And was it a was it, was this like a plan coming home? Like I'm ready. I got my degree. I'm right, I'm going right. to kick Vegas in its ass now. Right, right. Well, I mean, what was it? No, Jack. I think um, so. I finished my undergrad. And I think being. For me, I think being older, I saw like education's applicability, right, to, to life, right? And then I think I finished and then still had that itch to learn, man, and, and then um, decided to go uh, to graduate school. And then so I went to graduate school, University of San Diego, you know, beautiful campus, right? Uh, I, I definitely felt out of place, though, man. I was, um, you know, what it's predominantly, you know, white kind of female college, right? Uh, Must have been horrible. <laughs> Must have been horrible, Rick. How did you survive? Hey, 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 Jack, you know, they, they say <laughs> USD stands for University of Spoiled Daughters, man. So, oh, okay. Uh, All right. But, you know, I, I definitely saw when I walked around being a male Latino that I was, I felt like an anomaly, man, right? And then um, I had a great mentor there, Dr. Kenneth Gonzalez, another Latino who I felt like took me and, you know, a couple other uh, people of color under his wing, man. And I think he was like, you're not going to be a statistic, man. You're going to finish. You're going to make this happen. What are you studying? What's your master's in? What are you, yeah, what are you doing at this point? Yeah, it was, it was uh, in student development. Okay, so you're all in on the kid thing. All in on you're, the kid you're thing. You're going to be a teacher. You're going to do something around kids, and yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I was working at, uh, I did some for my practicum and kind of slash job type thing. Was at San Diego State. Was at a, a community college out there. And then I think just uh, was really interested in helping develop, you know, young men. I believe it's that stage where they're going to make lives or make decisions that are going to influence the trajectory of their lives, right? All right. About what they want to do for a career, what they want to do with the rest of their lives. They might meet their someone there. So I just really saw that as that age range where um, they're the most uh, influenced, right? Most impressionable, right? And because they're figuring life out, you know? And uh, so, yeah, student development was a big, big passion of mine, man. So that's I, what I pursued. I didn't even know that was a master's program. I, I, is that is that what a teacher takes to to be in the teaching world? Is that is that what we're, we're yeah no with? yeah yeah I'm sorry, Jack. It was a it was a a master's in counseling mm -hmm. with with uh, an emphasis in student development. Okay, all right. So you really wanted to get in their heads. You wanted to yeah. get really one to one yeah. to do some stuff. Yeah. So you get your master's, U.S. the University of Spoiled Daughters. Right. <laughs> What, uh, what, what makes the move back to Vegas? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I definitely want to, um, you know, uh, thank, you know, Irene Bustamante Adams because I think, you know, we were, fr had been friends for years at that time. And then, um, she approached me because the, the board here, Workforce Connections at the time, this was 2009, right? Okay. And so she had mentioned to me that the board had received a grant called Youth Build. And at that time, you know, I was out of the ministry. I was, you know, trying to sort out my life, Right. And then, um, you know, had like three different jobs. I was an evaluation consultant for like college preparatory programs. I was, you know, at San Diego State and I was at a community college. So I was jumping around and you know, San Diego, man, you oh, yeah. driving everywhere. Right. So, um, I think at that time I just needed to kind of figure out to do, have something a little more stable. Right. And then, uh, she reached out like in the summer of 09 and then says, Hey, you know, there's an opportunity out here. Really love for you to come out and check out this program. I met with the ED at the time, John Ball, you mm -hmm. know, um, and then uh, he's, he, we met and he, we talked about the youth build program and, and Jack, bottom line, man, it was aligned with my passion, aligned with my calling. And then, cause I knew what I wanted to do was something that I really believe would make a difference. I just didn't want to take any job. Right. And so, and I figured my family's out here, you know, my kids didn't necessarily grow up around my family. Um, so yeah, no nine made, made the move to come out here, man, back home. Anybody who hasn't seen the two boys, right? You got, right. you got Frankenstein. Right, the right. boy is huge now. What right. is he, was he lifting Chevys now? Right. Uh, he's, 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 I'd show you a picture, man, but you know, they, it'll, it'll distract the, uh, it'll it'll distract, distract it, it, all the honeys. <laughs> they're going to stop listening to us. They, all right. they're going to want to do is look at him. So well, how old is he? He's 21? No, 19. He'll be 20 this year, man. He's 19. Mm -hmm. Is he the younger one or the older one? He's the older one. Ricardo Antonio Villalobos. Ricardo Antonio Villalobos. Look yeah. at that. And then the, you had a younger. Younger one. Yeah. Da uh, Daniel Philip Villalobos. And they were both wrestlers, right? Or, yeah. They wrestled uh, primarily football. You know, right? They played football. Yeah. I hear these great stories about, you know, hey, hey, dad, I, I had to get in this mess, right? This dude's right. yelling at me and I'm holding him down. I mean, so right, right. not only were they, not only are they pretty, 
right. and strong, but they're also well raised young men too. So yeah, real yeah. compliment to you and your you and your ex. So thanks, Jack. I'm yeah. super proud of them, man, for sure. Yeah, that's great yeah, to hear. Good boys, man. That's good. Yeah. So you're here. Here. That's when me when me and you probably met 2009 ish in there yeah. somewhere. So you just yeah. got back. How is it different? Vegas, different town. You'd left oh, 10, Jack, 12 years man. earlier. Yeah, after 12 years. I mean, I, you know, I, I think about, like I was thinking, uh, or what I think about is when I, where I grew up, like the 95 didn't even exist, right? right? Like it was a desert. We'd right. go out there and catch, catch lizards on fire. I don't know if I should say that publicly, <laughs> man. But we, we were just kids, right? Like right. shooting bottle rockets at car from the trenches, you know, just right. all kinds of crazy kid stuff, right? And then, uh, I mean, so uh, now there's a freeway. Now there's a freeway, man. There's a, there's a 95, right? When, right. Uh, I mean, when I was a kid, Green Valley didn't exist, you know, um, Summerlin, like probably wasn't even in people's minds. So right? you're lost driving around town. Yeah, man. Where, yeah. You know, yeah. I grew up, Jack. And it's, it's funny. People ask me, where's this or that? And I'm like, I, I don't know, but I can tell you just about where anything's at on the East side. Right. 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 But, um, so yeah, I left, man. It, it, it had grown. Are you time. that guy that gives directions by restaurants? Like go up two Arby's, make a left at the <laughs> Wendy's. Are you probably, that guy? Yeah, yeah probably. Uh, yeah, more by landmarks, man. So that's my brother, yeah. Gabriel. That's all he can do. <laughs> and it's like he knows every fast food restaurant anywhere in Los Angeles. Right, right. Make a left at the Sammy's, go up two Taco Bells, make another right. right. You're right. like, dude, what? You, really? For right. real? <laughs> right. And then when you actually pay attention, you're like, okay, I'm here. I, yeah, I found it. Yeah, people will be like, hey, where's this or, or that at? You know, I'm like... I, I, I don't know, man. Aren't you from here? Born and raised here? I'm like, yeah. it, it didn't exist when I was here, man. Right. So. It's, it's not part of my, it's not, yeah, yeah. I know how to get to work. Yeah. I know how to get home. Right. I know how to get to church. That's it. And get back to the house. Right. That's right. it. Man. That's it. I hear you. I'm the <laughs> same it. way. I'm, and, and nowadays with the phones, we've become, we're just dumb now. Yeah. I don't remember any, remember how you used to know like 500 phone numbers? Right, right. Right. You knew every, I could almost tell you my, my girlfriend's right. phone number like from the third grade, right? right. Now, now I don't even know my own phone number. Right, I have right. no clue, right? I don't know how to get around because I can just map it. Right. Yeah. Right, yeah. We're, we're, so I, I love, I love this part of just like, there's no, 95 didn't exist. Town was different. Yeah. So you moved back. When you moved back, did you move back to the east side? No, no, I moved. He said, uh, he said no, no. I owe people over <laughs> no. their money. I ain't moving back to the east side. No, no, I, I, actually, I, I wanted to be close to work, man. And so moved um, kind of near this side of town. You know, it was uh, kind of, uh, where what, like Cheyenne in 95 over there. Okay, the new yeah. Northwest is what Yeah, kind of like the new Northwest, yeah. Okay, time, and, yeah, and yeah. that's all, even since I've been here, like I go up to Spring Mountain. When I first got here, there was some space where the city yeah, ended. Yeah. Yeah. And then that, whatever, I can't remember the name of the exit, whatever that Lone Mountain, whatever that yeah, exit that is. Big that stretch, yeah, big stretch, yeah. Yeah, there was yeah. a big stretch. Not yeah. anymore. Right. There's houses all the way up. All, and still growing, man. Right, yeah. and still growing. Mm -hmm. And it's growing towards Los Angeles, man. Yeah. And we're yeah. growing out towards Boulder City. I mean, towards we're growing Utah. in every direction. Yes, sir. Yep, yep. Yeah. I mean, are you, are you a fan? I mean, we got, four, what, 49 middle schools now? Uh, I was talking to Dr. Uh, Jara, our superintendent yeah. of schools. So 49 middle schools. I mean, what, 45 high schools? Yeah. This is a this is a different this is a different place, right? Man, it is, Jack. I, I think um, you know when I came back, I saw the growth. I think obviously being in workforce development, man, I, I um, I've seen a lot of economic growth. You know, I've seen it expand. Be you know, I, growing up, man, I was like, I'll probably end up in the gaming, tourism, or hospitality, right? Like my parents were. Right. Um, so I had a job actually at the Stardust, man. Before they broke it down, I was a room service bus boy there during high school. You know, and so any um, great stories. You got to tell no, us no, no, none that I can say publicly, man. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, that is no good. We need to hear. We need to hear a great story. You, you, so. you know, you know. Funny, I'll talk. I, I think I can share this one. But you remember the? Um, it was the drag queen show, man. Um, uh, I forget what it was called. Four uh, B's, Four J, or something like right. that. But they were the drag queens that were doing the show at the Stardust. I, I was uh, the room service bus boy that would bring them their their treats, man. And they were like, "Hey, we want the cute kid," you know. <laughs> so it was just. <laughs> It was wild. It was a wild time, man, for that, sure. Yeah. That is great. Yeah. Anybody, anybody who doesn't know Vegas doesn't yeah. know that, you know, first of all, the, the strip that we know it is unincorporated Clark County, right? Yeah. So we also know that there is just, I mean, there was a boom. I remember when I moved here in 2009, I remember going to Red Rock, you know, Red Rock Country Club, oh, not Red Rock Country Club, the Red Rock Casino up yeah. there on the station casino. There's nobody in it. Right. We're in the middle of the recession. I mean, so you move back, you're in the middle of the, the, middle of the recession. Mm -hmm. You're going to be doing this employment thing through Youth Build, which yeah. now is run by Chicanos por la Causa, right? Yeah. They, yeah, have, it, yeah. they have it now. Yeah, but doing a great job, man. Wilson Ramos is killing it. Yeah. yeah, you were the guy that kind of laid the foundation for him, right? You yeah, was the right. one who landed the first couple grants, right? Yeah. Really yeah. wrote that up. 
And and Wilson is he's a special he's a special character he's yeah. he's another great guy yeah. we got we me and you probably got to double team him on an we, interview we, here we, we would right we would. and we and we need to but yeah. you know we're not gonna let him get away with the G stories either <laughs> okay these these G rated stories we want to get him at least to the PG right right right, right, right. <laughs> right. so two point seven million people live here now yeah now you you yeah. moved here you're now well you're not Doctor Villalobos. How does this happen? You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm assuming, and I'm, uh, this is going to be a, a, a loaded question. Are you the only one of the seven that's got a college degree and also a master's degree, and now you're the only one of the seven with the with the doctorate? Yeah, Jack. You know, I, I am. You know, and I'm grateful for that. You know, I think uh, I always want to say though, I definitely. Um, you know, when it comes to like my siblings, I'm, I'm, you know, they're a lot, they're a lot smarter than me in certain areas, right? Like they can run circles around me. You know, my youngest brother, Pac-Man, Joe, Jose Luis, um, and great just with cars, great with construction, can build anything, do anything, fix anything. So incredibly smart. Uh, they're a lot, uh, you know, more street smart than I am, you know? So, um, but I have mad respect for him. I don't feel any any better, more important that I've accomplished more anything when it comes to, you know, my siblings, man, I got mad love and respect for them. But they got to be proud. Yeah, man. They got to be proud. They got a doctor in the family, right? right? And they're like, hey, man, can I get a prescription? Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Playing around. <laughs> Playing around. I'm not that kind of doctor. Yeah, I'm not that kind of man. Yeah, we got somebody dying over here. I'm like, hey, man, I'm not that kind of doctor, man. Robitussin, <laughs> man. Robitussin. That's what we have. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, parents got to be proud. Yeah, man. You know, I think my, my parents are proud. I know they are, man. I mean, I, you know, Jack, again, I, if it weren't for them, man, I, I wouldn't have been able to have that opportunity, man. And, and, as, so. and we all know in the, in the Latino community, there's all kinds of jokes when you walk in the door too, right? right. Doctor, you know, right, right, anyway, right? right? right. So you're, you're, right? You're, you're, the, you're the guy now, right? Right. I think you know everything, man. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, it's just a little area over here where I know a lot. I that's just know it, a man. little bit of stuff about this right that's, that's here. It. That's it. Man. <laughs> that's it. That's yeah. it. Well, I, I, you know, I, I, just to skip ahead a little bit different. Yeah. So you're raising, you're raising boys here. You're the, you're the new guy running youth build at, at work at WC workforce connections. You're, you know, you talked me into joining the board, you know, years yeah, ago. Thank you, Jack, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Boy, boy, did I get suckered in on that one, folks. <laughs> then, you know, my, my very first but, meeting, I'm sitting down there watching two people yelling at each other right, in the corner. Right. There were some times, man. I'm not going to be mm-hmm. buffaloed up in here. <laughs> Mr. Bilbo Blobos, I mean, I, right, I don't know right. how many times I had to hear your name destroyed. Oh man, it, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was a whole nother world. I'm sitting there thinking to myself, this dude Rick, do I owe him money? Right. <laughs> how, did, how did how did I end up on this thing right here? Right. right. So I, I guess to because Jaime's probably going to be watching this, thinking to himself, what is, when is Jack going to talk about workforce stuff? Right, right, well, right. we're talking about workforce stuff, Rick. We're talking about a young leader in our community, a young man of color, and we're hearing his story, Jaime. So right. pipe down, <laughs> right. pipe down, Jaime. We've heard enough. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so now, now you're here. You've left for a little bit to go to CSN. We were happily stole you back, brought you back. So now you're the director of programs. Yeah. The chief programs officer. Yeah. Okay. Well, chief programs officer. Right, I'm, right. So, I'm so sorry. That's I, got, right. I got the title <laughs> right. wrong. I'm so sorry. All right, man. So, so walk me through, because anybody who doesn't know Rick, the, when we talk about this expertise, about this little area in the world, Rick really is the expert in this space. So every time like I feel like I'm talking about workforce related issues and from my world, from the probation department world, I always had that little Rick right here going, talk about the Blueprint 3.0, Jack. Talk right. about industry. Talk about, I don't know, remember what you call it, the dual alignment where, right, we, right. where we teach to the actual curriculum, right? Yeah. So we so we sat here the other day and we had a meeting with the gentleman from Los Angeles yeah. who, who brought this great conversation. So what are, we, what are we doing? How do we need to get better? What do we, you know, I've got young men of color trapped in my system, young men and women of color trapped in my system on the regular that are little ricks. Right. They grew up right. right here in this community that have no idea, have never been to Mount Charleston, never right. been to the Strip, right. lived in their tiny little neighborhoods and have no idea about workforce development. Where where, where are we missing it, I guess, would be my first question. And then I'll, I'll probably have some follow-ups to that. Yeah, no, Jack, I appreciate the question, man. I get fired up talking about our youth, you know. Um, you know, Jack, I, I, I would say... You know, let me say it this way. Having been a part of the board for nine years, gone for four years and back, it's it's phenomenal, man, what's happened to this board. I mean, I think the folks who are on it are just the right people in the right seats. Uh, And and I do want to credit, I don't want to sound like a a sycophant, right, with Jaime, but 
He's done a phenomenal job, man. I mean, as far as getting the right people in the right seats. Um, Jerry's done a great job. Cecil's done a great job. Man, yeah. yeah, Incredible folks. Yeah, 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 man. And and, um, so I I think the right people are in the right seats. And I think that, you know, my perspective is this, Jack. I think, um, I don't think it's a matter, we're at a point where I think we're at a point where we're figuring out the how, right? And I think those conversations are happening, right? I think somebody said we, we like each other, right? I mean, there's great energy, great synergy, great vibes, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to the board meetings, man. I, in the past, I, I'd walk away, beat up, looking for other jobs, you know, and now it's like- While we're texting each well, other yeah, yeah, the board <laughs> yeah. meeting. I'm going, what are you doing to me, man? Right. Man, just shut up and sit down. Yes, right, 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 right. Right. But uh, I, I think, um, you know, I mentioned that to say because I feel like it's it's- the time is right, man. There, there hasn't been a time like this in, in the board's existence that I'm aware of and been a part of that's existed like this, man. The right people in the right seats, the right champions such as yourself, man. And I, I would say, um, so just as a, just a touch on that. Yeah. So some of the people sitting on the board, you got the superintendent of schools, yeah. Dr. Jar, you got the superintendent of uh, college of Southern Nevada, mm-hmm. Dr. Zedagosa, right. You've got, you know, Martin and Harris construction. Yeah. You've got bank leaders like our, like our that chair, Mary, yeah. right. You've got transportation leaders yeah. like Cecil. We've got, we've skilled got trades, yep, yeah, skilled trades, man. Skilled trades are on the board. Yeah. Lou DeSalvio. The and, Dieter on it. Yep, right. I mean, yep. yeah, yeah. So there, I mean, we got some killers and we have some, yep. the, the part that I love about it is we're always having conversations about what's in the best interest of Southern Nevadans. We're never having conversations right. about egos or what drives egos. That's right. Cause that's what I stepped into. It was yeah. a lot of ego yeah. and bullying and who was going to get what they wanted to get. Yeah. So I agree with you, Jaime and our previous chair, um, Valerie Merzel mm-hmm. and now, and now Jerry Merritt, uh, your bank of Nevada, I believe. Yep. 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 I always get that confused. Then she always gives me the stink eye, right? You just say bank, man. Right, just the bank. Just the bank. The, the bank boss, uh, <laughs> right. Jerry, is uh, has done a great job kind of picking up where Valerie t- left yeah. off. And we're just doing these things. So, But I you know, I got to get back to it, Rick. We, we and, and Dr. Jara and Dr. Zedagosa have done an incredible job because we're now talking honest conversations that every kid's not going to college. Yeah. Me and you didn't go to college right out of high school. Right. I'm the same way. I went to the trades. Right. So we're now having conversations that people can join the trades. Let's how do we connect them to the trades? How do we do that? Where what do we need to be doing? I mean, we just we just did that that exercise where we got to see the dance video. And my whole argument here in Southern Nevada is we have to invest in this K through 12 development. Yeah. We're, we're one of the least poorly funded schools or school districts in the country per pupil. You know, so I, I really struggle with this idea of how do we build a work ready workforce when a really work ready workforce oftentimes starts in that K through 12 system. Am I missing it? What I mean? Yeah, I 100% agree with you, man. I think, um, you know, I'm big, personally big supporter of Hara. You know, I think he's the right superintendent in the right seat and I'm glad he's here. And I hope he stays here, you know, as, as long as he can, man, because I think he, my big thing is the, my message is education is workforce development. Right. Right. Right, right. And we, uh, I think he's open and the district's open to starting, we, we can never start soon enough. You know, we got to start with planting seeds, right? Like even, even something as simple as, you know, getting coloring books that visually shows kids and, and it busts the stereotypes, right. Of careers that they can be in. Right. Right. Uh, you know, it, it's showing them via a coloring book that plants a seed in an elementary mind that they can be a doc. They could be a female. It could be a young uh, African-American female that can be a doctor and seeing that visually, right. Plants that seed. Right. Yep. And they, all the other industries as well. And so I think we have to get creative, innovative, you know, again, with we owe, as you know, only goes, you know, has a certain age range, right? But we can still be creative, innovative with what we can do for our young, you know, young elementary kids, our middle school kids, right? And so I think it's just continuing to have the conversation, having the right champions in the seat, and then doing a little bit, man, having those, having those small wins, getting momentum, uh, and just figuring out, I'll, I'll share this real quick, I, I appreciate the uh, the Department of Juvenile Justice Services, as you know, we have a fellows program mm-hmm. and I'll tie this in, but we have about, you know, nine uh, PO probation officers, right? Or individuals involved with Eagle Quest that are at the harbors. And what we're doing is saturating them with information about the system, right? And then the next, what the phase we're in now is more an implementation. What they're working on for a capstone is what can we do for our youth, regardless of what age they're at, that brings workforce development to them. So we got an elementary kind of, you know, discussion going on. Something as simple as coloring books, right? Okay, what do we do with our middle schoolers, right? Figuring that out. What do we do with our high schoolers, right? Uh, and this is even before the WIOA conversation, right? Getting them yeah. enrolled. And so I think we continue to have the conversations. I think we continue to build the, those system partnerships and, and figure it out together, Jack. And that, that's what I believe we're doing, man. 
I think one of the beautiful parts that we forget sometimes is like Father Boyle says out of Homeboy Industries mm-hmm. in LA, right? It's nothing stops a bullet like a job, like a job right? Yeah. So we, you know, I mean, when we talk about these development pieces, I mean, one of the first things we did was integration. So it, we have to step back knowing where we're at today. I mean, I love it when Jaime talks about it. I very rarely love anything Jaime talks about, but right. I do love, I, lo- I do love it when he talks about when we were like 550th workforce board in the country, right? And then we won the Super Bowl of workforces. Yeah. Is that the Moran Award? Lori Moran, yeah. Well, Lori yeah. Moran Award a couple of years ago. Now yeah. we're continuing to push it. So talk to me about some of the innovations that took us from where you were 12, 13, 14 years ago to where we are today. What what took us from the, the cellar dwellers to, to the Super Bowl champs? You know, I mean, great question. And I think, you know, again, I, I credit Hyman, man. I think I, I wasn't here, you know, when, when uh, all that, uh, that stuff was happening. I think there's a couple things, right? I think, number one, we got focused on what needed to happen. And then I think we took some risks, right? Uh, you know, I think this whole movement towards the library system, partnership with the Clark County Las Vegas Library District, the Henderson, the North Las Vegas, phenomenal partnerships, man, because what we were able to do is have a greater uh, geographic footprint in our community, right? We don't need folks who aren't working, traveling a couple hours on a bus to get to our, one of our one-stop centers, right? How can we bring it to the people, right? And so, so anybody think, who doesn't know that our one stops are at the at the at the libraries, or mm-hmm. we actually have workforce development staff through our contracts working at the actual libraries throughout our valley. So, yeah. and one of the largest barriers we have, especially for lower socioeconomic families, is transportation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So think about it. One of the exercises I know that we used to do in our in my line of work was give somebody a stroller, give them lots of give them you know two kids, give them a bus pass and give them five places to go during the course of the day, sure. right? And That's you start true. to understand that the obstacles are real yep. and that a bus token is not a transportation solution. That's right. Right? So I mean, so when we talk about that spreading this wealth yep. closer to where the families are, yep. I mean that's huge. So that that's one innovation. What uh, what else did we did we do as a as a as a community or that as, workforce kind of spearheaded. Yeah. Yeah. So Jack, I would say, um, so one was that shift for the job seeker, right? I think the second significant shift was creating these business hubs because our other customer, right, is, is employers, it's businesses, right? Because we need to work with employers and businesses. I mean, why are we going to train people if there's no job opportunities? Right. And so I think this, uh, this first of its kind business hubs, you know, in, in, uh, in a library as well. Right. Right. In, in, a, in a chamber here in Nevada, the biggest chamber, right? The Vegas chamber uh, said, hey, we want to welcome a business up here, right? Direct contact, man, with, with employers. Uh, then since then, I mean, we've, uh, we've moved into uh, municipal locations for business hubs, right? So basically it was just, how do we get to the people? I mean, that's the bottom line. How do we get to the job seeker? How do we get to the business? So I think that's been very innovative. Um, one, of the, one of the things that you always taught me, Doc, was, you know, the uh, building that pipeline backwards, finding the job first. Yeah. And then we went to San Antonio together, I believe. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you said, so here's the job. And it was Toyota, I believe. Mm-hmm. And they said they worked with the local school district to say we will pay or build or you will yeah, combine. Yeah. We'll blend funding. We'll leverage each other's funding and we'll build resources inside these these um, schools to yeah. train Toyota mechanics. Or t- train Toyota specific needs. Right. Yeah, yeah. So we started and we worked the industry backwards, right. Yeah. Where, and I remember this will always stick with me. I remember you thinking I'm, I'm learning, I'm trying to learn about the ETPL list. I'm trying to learn about all these different acronyms that the business right. has. And yeah. you're like, he goes like, Jack, we're training people to be dog massagers. There's no damn jobs in dog massaging. What are we doing? Right. Like, you know, so we're wasting our money. We're throwing money away. Let's train people for jobs. And then I'd never, I heard it, but I, and I understood it, but I'd never been focused on this idea of a livable wage. Yeah. Right. And that's yeah. everything that we're focused around. Our metrics are based on jobs and livable wages and how yeah, do we yeah. get there. Right. So, yeah. you know, what I mean, which is completely different change. When I first got here, it was, hey, let's spread as much money to as, right, as, to as, right. as, as many participants as we could. There was a billion providers. We weren't getting the metrics we wanted. I remember half of our board meeting was talking about pink slips. Yeah. Let's, yeah. you know, what is what is a pink slip? Who cares about a pink slip? I'm sitting here going, what is a pink slip? I remember right. texting you, what is a pink slip and why do I care? Right, right? right. But we literally spent half our day and then grilling a provider going, right. well, now we've we've limited that. We've, yep. we've t- I don't think we've even discussed a pink slip in a, a couple of years at a board meeting. Yeah, it's been a while. Well I'm looking right. over here and I'm getting a, a confirmation <laughs> from Sonia, so yes. Yep. Uh, I mean, the, you know, the reality for me is, so what else did we do? Yeah, Jack, I, I think... Um, so we had, the, you know, the library shift, right, for right. one-stop locations. We had the business hub shift, right? I think we also started to focus. I think we took this um, 
this kind of good to great approach, right? Me- meaning how, if we're doing a couple things good, how can we make those things great, right? right. And some hard, the board made some hard decisions, you know? Uh, it wasn't Jaime, it wasn't the staff, you know? We report to the board, present ideas, recommendations. At the end of the day, the board and our elected officials make the decision. And I think we, we made a shift to focus uh, on, a, on a few providers, you know, and then, uh, and with that, I mean, one of the things I think is often highlighted is this shift about, um, you know, fewer providers, right? And that they would be in locations that the board would dictate, right? Uh, saved us a million dollar in overhead costs, man. So what does that mean for us, right? That means it's a million dollars that back, goes into our community. Back to right? training people for the services they need, right? Yeah, man. Yep. And, and then I, I think also having having the right conversations about, you know, where we should be spending our funds, right? And, and, and I think, you know, Jack, if I can talk about this for a second is it's, it's not shying away from what might be some of the hardest challenges when it comes to our funding, right? Uh, I'm a big believer that we have to, we must, I believe it's an imperative, man, that we focus on our systems impacted, systems involved youth, right? Yep. What I'm referring to is juvenile youth, uh, foster youth, uh, homeless and runaway youth, pregnant and parenting youth, right? Youth with disabilities. At Promise um, Youth. At Promise Youth, man. Opportunity. <clears throat> none of this, yep. you know, uh, you, you almost had me use profanity, man, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think um, our youth who really need it, yep. you know, uh, we looked at the high school data and, and you know, on average, uh, you know, there's about 6% of our in-school youth at these high schools who are systems impacted or systems involved, right? But on, that's average, man. That's when you bring in the Palo Verdes, right? The Centennials, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But when you look at the valleys, right? The Mojaves, the Eldorados, the Sunrise Mountains, right? The Legacies, right? You get up, you, Rancho, right? You get up into like the 13th percentile. You know, that's one out of 10 of our kids, man, in school being systems impacted, systems involved. And so I think uh, we have to be willing to take the risk because, you know, we get into performance discussions and what's the impact, you know, on performance outcomes, if we're focused on the mountain or if we're focused on kids on probation and stuff like that. And yeah. I just think it's, it's BS to be honest with you, man. These are our kids who need it, you know? And I think uh, the focus of let's focus on where our resources are really needed and, and believing that it can be done, that it needs to be done, figuring out how it needs to get done. But I think I went off on a tangent, man, um, no, you know, to your question, man. No, I, I, I love it. And, you know, one of the things I've appreciated about Jaime, and, and please don't ever tell him this, is that, you know, he's really exposed the board to different ways of thinking, right? Yeah. When I went to my first knob yeah. conference and I heard these people talking about collaboration and I said, so why don't we do that? Mm-hmm. And everybody kind of looked at me like, well, Jack, you're sitting next to the person at the board meeting and that's the person that's cussing at the other guy and that person's cussing at the yeah. other guy. And, and we all had these fiefdoms and nothing was right. and nothing was being done. Right. So now I look at it and I think, okay, so we've got to a place now where we're sharing space. We've leveraged yep. dollars. We've leveraged each other's relationships. Texas has a whole nother thing. Right. Believe right. whatever you want to think about right. Texas, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? You, red or blue, right. you, right. Do, right. you can do you, I'll do me, right? But the, the reality is, is, I like their system. They drag all that money into one pot. They look at what's working. They look at analytics, right? They make decisions as a statewide, you know, consortium or whatever they call themselves. And then they, and then they, they fund appropriately using multitudes of leveraged dollars. Cause it's my understanding. There's like 17 or 18 different federal income streams. Yeah. 17. For Wiola. Yeah. That that come into Nevada. Right. Yep. 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 So how can we go from where we're at or do we need to go to the next step? What is, the, what does the next step look like in terms of that? Is it forced collaboration? Is it legislation? Is it continued working relationships like you guys are building? Yeah. What, do, what do we need to do next to, to get us to the next level? Yeah, Jack, integration, right, is, is the key word there. And, okay. I, and, and I think um, what, I, what I've seen, man, be effective is, you know, it's in the legislation, right? That there needs to be integration, right? But I think what I've seen with my own eyes is it's about relationships, man. It's it's about, you know, I mean, think about this, Jack. What that means when you're truly integrated, man, when you're truly integrated, a person, regardless of what their needs are, right, can come into like, let's say a one-stop center. And with 17 partners, with 17 funding streams, right, their needs can be met, man. If it's, if it's a veteran, for example, right, they, they don't have to be you know, told, hey, go somewhere else for this particular service or this particular funding stream because you don't qualify for this or that. Uh, military spouses, man, same same thing, you know, uh, individual with disabilities. So that's the significance of true integration. You come to one stop. No wrong door approach. No wrong door approach, you know. I think we're heading in that direction. Dieter's been a phenomenal partner in that direction, you know. Uh, other Other partners as well. 
But I think this, this, our, our next step is to have facilities, to have sites that allow, uh, it goes, you know, the legislation talks about meaningful access. Like for example, if you don't have somebody there, you still have direct access, you know, to get in touch with that person, which I think is great. That's where we're at now. But it still doesn't. But, it still doesn't tackle it. We still it, don't. It, it we still don't have a universal intake form, right? Right. Right. We still don't have universal information. So we've got people filling out the same information in a multitude of places, getting bored out of their minds, not yeah. wanting, you know, having to transport, you know, themselves and their family. We yeah, don't yeah. have daycare on those sites, right? right? Right. We don't. You know, we're not. We don't provide daycare for these training sites, right? One of right. the, you know, yeah, I, I heard there was an argument recently that daycare is a healthcare issue. Right. This this is a basic need. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, and, and I know we've got a commissioner locally, Commissioner Marilyn Kirkpatrick, yeah. that is great and, champion. Man. Right. A great champion for not only workforce development, but, you know, working mothers, working yeah. families. Yes. Right. Yeah. That whole piece. I mean, so you know, I, I love the integration idea because, you know, we modeled we modeled integration into our juvenile assessment centers. Right. 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 So. I mean, that's the next step I'm super pumped about because we have five, we call them harbors here, juvenile assessment centers here in town. Now we're going to have youth component, yeah. youth employment component at all five of those centers. That's right. What is that going to look like at those, at those harbor centers? Yeah, Jack, we're fired up about that here, man. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, really, I mean, think about it. So again, it's not having a separate location for the youth that you serve. They need to be a priority for our system, right? That are high need and need it, right? Right. And so that, that means, so now you got your, your harbor kind of experts, right? Your, your, your uh, experts in your area, right? And then now we're bringing, uh, not, not, it's two parts, man. It's, we're bringing WIOA kind of subject matter experts to leverage the resources for the same youth that we're both targeting to serve, right? And then, so that's one component of it. The other component, as I mentioned earlier, is JJ Fellows Program. So now we're taking JJ people and giving them information so that they become fundamental, right? Subject matter uh, experts. So they know kind of how to navigate our system, right? They might not be able to do all the administrative paperwork stuff, but that's why our person is there. Another added component, Jack, that kind of the next phase of this, we have a CCSD workforce development fellows, JJ's promise fellows, right? And so one of the things we're working on is, okay, we take the Harbor as the hub, right? We have a, we owe a youth provider that's funded from workforce connections, have that staff person there. We're going to tie in what are the high schools at that particular harbor is located, you know, or connected to within its kind of network, right? right, right. And then we're going to connect the counselors from CCSD fellows program with the JJ fellows with our we owe a staff person. So think about that. I mean, that, it's creating a network. I mean, that, that's that's integration, right? right. This is uh, three systems working together that are serving our most in need youth. And anybody who's worked in social services or human services of any kind knows. Most of what gets done is through a relationship, right? Yeah. Me and Rick, you know, yeah. I got a kid I need help with. I, I sent you an email today about a place that needs job seat, that needs, you know, kids in the dishwashing pit and whatever. Okay. I mean, so we're constantly building these relationships. And once we start to value these relationships, right, once these yeah. relationships start to bear fruit, then we get to the next level. Yeah. So the reality is for me, you know, a lot of years, three decades in this business for me, yeah. re-entry population yeah. with our Come new work, him, with our new workforce, yeah. the great resignation. Yeah. What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing with this re-entry population? Yeah. And what is, what is best practice with this re-entry population? Or do we even know? Yeah. Man, Jack, I would say, you know, I'm going to kind of tackle this with both the adults and the youth, right? Okay. I think a few, Please. a few years ago, there was a collaboration and an effort, uh, you know, with the band, the box initiative. Right. And there've been employers that have brought in or have bought in, I should say, with banning the box. All right. Cause you know, you fill an application, have you ever been convicted of a felony? And I think with adults, you know, what do you do, man? You know, seriously, what do you, what do you do? Do, do, do I, do I check right. it off because I want to, I need to be honest, you know, right. and then not be given the opportunity. Right. right. I mean, when we I know got what, San Quentin tattooed on my neck. Right. Right. right, right. We know what happens. Right. right? right, right. Or, or, or do I lie? so that I at least have a job until they find out, right? So we, right. we put them in this, this, this predicament, man, that they're, they're less, less humans, right? It's a, it's a trick you know? bag, yeah. And, and so, you know, so I think employers who have bought in to banning the box, that's the right thing to do, right? People need to be judged on the merit of their work ethic, man, and, and where they can bring to my organization what they need, right? And so I think that was a huge initiative, you know, that, that has been successful, right? Um, I think the other thing, Jack, with, with adult programs and even youth programs is doing pre-release programs, right? Not waiting till they get out, but how can we work with, you know, 
returning citizens before they're out. How, how soon can we get in there? You know, NDOC has been a partner, you know, CCDC has been a partner. And how can we get more programs in there pre-release so that we start setting them up before they're released? And then we put them on a pathway once, you know, continued pathway, right? A segue once they're released, whether they're youth coming out of the mountain, right? Youth out of mm-hmm. probation yeah. or adults coming out of, you know, uh, um, you know, Indian Springs or, or CDC, uh, CCDC. So I, I think um, you asked, have we missed in the mark? I think we've gotten a lot better. You know, I think we have some great providers in our community who are, who are doing great work. Um, but I definitely believe it's a population that, that cannot and should not be neglected with our workforce development efforts. And I think we need to understand that there's some really positive human capital there. Right? Absol- absolutely. Right? And I mean, we, we have to, we have to integrate that level of population into our, into our real workforce, not just the root of, you know, the rudimentary entry level jobs. These are, yeah. these are talented. You know, yeah. I've worked in prisons. A lot of the men that are in, in men and women that are in those prisons were talented people that made a couple of bad decisions, maybe some drugs or alcohol decisions. They've, they've paid their price to the community. Mm. They've been, they've been removed. Their lives have been changed. It's time to allow them to be great again. Right. right. And yeah. to get and to wrap them in the supports to do those things. Right. Yeah. You and I've made decisions that we just didn't get caught. Right. Mm. I mean, Wait, whoa, whoa, sir. Uh, uh, well, uh, <laughs> but you might have, right? No, no. Right. I, I, you want me to go on camera, man? <laughs> no, no, but I, but I think, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head, Jack, man. I, I think, um, it's about creating opportunities for them, man. I mean, again, my, my own brother, my youngest brother, right? Pac-Man was a returning citizen. Super sharp, man. I'm telling you, he can build anything, fix anything. Um, and, you know, he, if, he just needs to give, be given an opportunity. I, I do want to give some some recognition and props to the skilled trades. Super open to returning citizens, man. And uh, providing them great opportunities for phenomenal careers, right? Oh. Um, pensions. I mean, you, you, you name it, man. And I think... Um, the more open our employer community is, and I get it, you know, there's certain things based on, you know, mm. the, the past history or whatever, where they, you know, aren't going to be allowed to take on certain roles, responsibilities, or functions. Um, but there's more, man. I, I think with our uh, local economy, having the workforce shortage that it does, there's a phenomenal, as you mentioned, human capital working with mm. our returning citizens that I think we'll rock their socks off if just given an opportunity. And even on some of the basics, right? Just starting with like just supporting the entrepreneurial spirit of some yeah. of these guys, right? Because yeah. I mean, you know, I think Chef Jeff says it all the time, right? He he did. He's not changing the hustle. He's just changing the product, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, which I love. I love that idea of just this grind, this hustle that we have to we have to teach, and we as the squares need to understand that we're we're possibly and potentially missing out on some incredible opportunities to have real game changers working for our organizations because yeah. of some incredible antiquated talent, way of man. thinking, right? Yeah. Jack, I think I, I like to say, you know, particularly with youth, man, it's about, it's not about changing their behavior. It's about redirecting it. Right. They're hustlers, man. They're smart. They're intelligent, man. They, they, there's a lot of talent and skill set there, man. I, I tell know. people all the time, my job is to change their biographies, not their geographies. Yeah. You know, and yeah, that yeah. and that that trips people out a little bit because we spend a lot of time threatening and yeah. talking about graduated sanctions and all this kind of antiquated ideas that we know don't work. Yeah. Yeah. If some of these ideas worked, I'd be on, I'm on board. Right. If you told me that punching every 17 year old in the <laughs> right. neck worked and they'd never commit right. a crime, I'd be standing at the exit of every high school right. socking 17 year olds <laughs> in the neck, right? But the you know the reality is is that's not what works, right? So we have to get in the investing our dollars where the stuff does work. So I need to I need to wrap this up. I need to say first of all, I, thank you, Dr. Villalobos, for sitting you, here Jack. and spending some time talking to me. I have love you to death. I Maybe think too. there there is nothing better than watching a proud, strong, smart, connected Hispanic male representing Southern Nevada that I couldn't who has a heart for people, has a heart for humans, has a this incredible capacity to love. You're an incredible human. I'm super Thank proud you. to know you. I, I can most everything I say for anybody on the camera that's workforce related has been straight robbed straight from Dr. Villalobos' face. I just take it. And I try to put my little dummy spin on it, but it's usually Dr. Villalobos. And and with, with those thoughts, thank you, brother. Love, Love you. Love you too, Jack. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. All right. And uh, with that, I'd like to wrap it up. So thank you for joining us on the Workforce Connections podcast, the WC podcast. 